Let's settle for Ghana Briefs. The minority in parliament has rejected explanations by the Bank of Ghana on the 60 billion city loss incurred in 2022, describing them as mere diversions and a calculated distortion of facts and flimsy excuses. The minority in the last week has demanded the resignation of the governor, Dr. Ennis Addison, and his deputies accusing them of financial mismanagement. <music> West African army chiefs will meet on Saturday in Accra to discuss the military coup in Niger. Some reports suggest they will prepare plans for a military intervention. It comes after the regional bloc, ECOWAS, ordered the activation of a standby force during a meeting in Nigeria on Thursday. The European Union has said Niger's ousted president is being held in deteriorating conditions under house arrest and has called for its immediate release. EU foreign policy chief Joseph Borrell said President Mohamed Bazoum and his family had been deprived of food, electricity and medical care for several days. The chairperson of the African Union, Musa Faki Mohamed, has expressed the union's support for ECOWAS and also condemned the continued detention of President Bazoum and his family. The AU has also called for its immediate release and called on the entire international community to unite efforts to save the moral and physical integrity of President Bazoum. Food crisis looms in the northeast region following severe flooding which has affected almost two-thirds of the region. In a bid to avoid any further catastrophe, reconstruction of the Waluwale Gambaga Nalurigu road, which was affected, has begun. Farms have just been completely washed away. The crops are gone. Some too are now buried in, in the no, The water carries along debris. Some of the farms are buried in the debris. Appealing to benevolent um, institutions and philanthropists who 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 who. Uh, uh, within and outside this country to come to our aid. Member of Parliament for Domingo Kwabinya, Sara Adrasafo, says she will contest the NPP parliamentary seat again. She's convinced her constituents still love her and want her again, and she will not disappoint them, adding her chances of winning the party primaries are very bright. This is Great Accra, and there comes a time where we celebrate Homo War Festival. So it's, it's a religious thing that we always do, that we pay catsy calls on all the chiefs in the communities and then wish them um, a happy homo war, happy year, and ask for their blessings also. And the feeling I'm having now with the people that are coming out just to scream your name, just to have a handshake, I think I still have a lot to do for my people. And I, I have to take the pain to explain to them the reasons for my absence. The National Service Scheme intends to deploy 500 personnel to its farms this year. The move is in line with its current resolve to deploy, retrain and provide employment opportunities for personnel under the Deployment for Employment mission of the scheme. Reposition ourselves to be able to become a real force to, to solve the unemployment situation in the country. That is why over the years, even though we have been in the agri industry, but this time round, national service have gone into a high-scale commercial farming. I've learned how to grow maize, coconut, rice, um, soya beans, and they are now into aquaculture, that's catfish and tilapia. I want the government to maintain us because, I mean, the national service, so that maybe we will supervise them, because now we have a lot of knowledge about field. Well, there's more news on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. This is Ghana Tonight. Coming up next, the economic community of West African states, ECOWAS, is to meet again tomorrow, not Saturday, on a planned military intervention in Niger school. But there's also a, a pushback for Ghana not to commit soldiers. And um, we have a conversation on this particular issue because of, of the dynamics involved and how things are playing out as we speak. Um, in, in that part of the country and, and West African army chiefs are expected to meet um, that's tomorrow, that's Saturday here in Accra to discuss the military coup in Niger. Some reports suggest 
they will prepare plans for a military intervention. It's not too clear, though, but it comes of the, after the regional bloc, ECOWAS ordered the activation of a standby force during a meeting in Nigeria, uh, that's Abuja specifically, yesterday. The European Union has also said Niger's ousted president is being held in deteriorating conditions under house arrest and has called for his immediate release. In fact, the EU foreign policy chief, Joseph Porubel, said President Mahmoud Bazoum and his family had been deprived of food, electricity, and medical care for several days. And uh, the chairperson of the African Union, Musa Faki Mahamat, has also expressed the union's support for the ECOWAS and also condemned the continued detention of President Bazoum and, and his family. And uh, the AU uh, has also called for his immediate release and called on the entire international community to unite efforts to save the moral and physical integrity of President Bazoum. So that's how things are playing out um, in Niger. And the, the videos you're seeing, uh, some that we, we got from uh, that, that particular country earlier, they had also declined to meet a delegation made up of the AU, the United Nations, and also ECOWAS. That's the military chiefs, the, the co-leaders in Niger. However, there's actually a pushback for Ghana not to commit soldiers to the ECOWAS standby um, force. Now, let's go on to the telephone now. James Agalga is a member of parliament for the Bosa North constituency. He's a ranking member on the Defense and Interior Committee of Parliament. Thank you so much for your time here on Ghana Tonight. First of all, we are seeing this situation de de developing quite fluidly in uh, Niger. Is, is this going to achieve, and I'm talking about this option of the military intervention with the standby force of ECOWAS already put on alert, is it going to achieve that objective of returning Niger to its democratic status as the ECOWAS chiefs are expecting? I have um, clearly spoken out against um, military intervention in Niger. Rather, what I think uh, we should be engaging in is um, to use diplomatic means to try to defuse the tension in that country and uh, get the military junta to uh, come out with a, 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 a road map uh, which eventually should lead to the return of that country to civilian rule. Uh, but unfortunately, ECOWAS, acting through its uh, health of state, are more interested in using force to solve the uh, problem in Niger. I do not think that in the long run the use of force would be in the interest of uh, the sub-region. I say this because some member states of ECOWAS, such as Burkina, Guinea, have all pledged support and have actually stated categorically that in the event of an attack by the rest of um, ECOWAS, they would go to the defense of Niger. Now, Alfred, to, to, to let the thing occur, you would have the nasty situation whereby West African armies would be pitched in battle against themselves. We would steal West African blood. We would destroy another West African country in the same way that Libya was destroyed in the same way that other countries that have been the subject of invasions you know, have been destroyed, such as Afghanistan. So, Alfred, if you think about the repercussions of this whole action, mm. and for how long would the Kowas be in the, the, the court may are not, uh, 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 you know, going to be easy. Mm. for all of us. The entire sub-region would be engulfed in a complete situation. I see, I but think. some also say that Ghana is in a, is in a dicey position 
um, in all what's happening in Niger because if you look at our neighboring countries, at least two of them have taken different positions on this Niger matter. Burkina Faso has pledged support for the coup leaders. That's the military leadership in Niger. And then Côte d'Ivoire yesterday, we got to know that Lahasa Ouattara has already pledged 1,000 troops to support the ECOWAS force there. And then Ghana is in the mix in here. Would you, would you say that, that this slippery path has to gain especially the attention of, of parliament before a decision is taken as to whether to commit troops to this ECOWAS force or otherwise? Yes, and so that is why Alfred, I, I, I think I would advise to come before parliament as a so that the will of will be expressed on the question of whether or not to commit any deployment of our troops in Niger without gauging what the people of this country think to their representatives would be disastrous. Because, you see, you are going to war, you want to declare war on another country, you need the people's consent. Because war is war. If you go to war, there are certain things that immediately become inevitable. One, the, 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 the loss of life. So the very people you are going to commit to go and fight, they will be casualties. Nobody goes to war with us as human casualties. Now, are we prepared as a country to commit our gallant soldiers to Niger? And then when we start uh, 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 sustaining casualties, what do we think? Because there was no prior consultation with them before the deployment. What? Additionally, we're going to have to commit resources to fund, to prepare, to go and... Now, this is happening at a time when Ghana is in serious economic to the extent that even our central bank is on. So, so, so they, 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 there are so many and, and those things uh, of the, the various ECOWAS members must be taken into. Again, you have the situation whereby Ghana bordered so. They are our neighbors. We are partners in the fight in prison. All right? Through the Accra. Now, should we go to war in Niger and Burkina Faso is fighting on the side of the military junta in Niger and we are fighting on the side of ECOWAS. What it would simply mean is that Ghanaian and Ivorian sorry, could find themselves, I mean, on the same battlefield ship. Then you ask what becomes of our uh, uh, Accra initiative. What becomes of it? Would we continue to enjoy the kind of collaboration we have been having with Burkina Faso, wouldn't we be exposing ourselves to the terror threat up more? So, you see, in, in, in these matters, I think we must place our national interest uh, above all other considerations. We know, yes, ECOWAS uh, will have good intentions when they adopted certain protocols to ensure that, look, um, democratically elected governments are not overthrown. But at the same time, they also, in, 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 in those circles, talk about the need to uh, ensure that there are no massive violations of rights and, and, and the rule of law. But the question I asked that I would want to pose is, what has been the response of ECOWAS in the face of clear cut violations of fundamental human rights of uh, uh, citizens of uh, uh, ECOWAS uh, uh, state? What has been the response? So you see, you know, when uh, uh, incumbent president manipulated the constitution to allow for them to exceed the constitutionally guaranteed term limit, two terms, all right, and, and there are mass protests, they use brute force to disperse crowds, kill people in the protest, violate their rights. I, know, I, I, I just wanted to hold on to that point about the, the concerns that you raise because we have just received this news item um, earlier published by the Associated Press that 
the junta, that is the, the coup leaders in Niger, have threatened to kill uh, President Bazoum if ECOWAS carries out its option of the military intervention in the, in the country. And that's what the Associated Press is just reporting, that the Niger junta have decided that, really threatened, that if ECOWAS goes ahead with the military intervention, President Bazoum, who is in their custody, they would have no option than, than, than to, to, to take his life. The, should this threat influence the meeting, especially tomorrow, by the security chiefs of ECOWAS, after we, we, we're hearing this? You see, I've heard in our the planning uh, uh, process, I think that ECOWAS itself should have secured the, the, the safety mm -hmm. Of President Bazoum before, before uh, you know, threatening to use force. If you ask me, that is my personal view. Right. Because here is the case you have Bazoum in captivity, so yes. to speak. The same people who are holding him, you are threatening to apply force on them. I think we should, we should, we should uh, take the safety of uh, uh, the President Bazoum very seriously. And then that is why uh, you know, it is important to use diplomatic means to resolve the crisis in, 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 in Niger. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Uh, James Agaga, thank you for joining us here. Um, on Ghana tonight. He's a member of parliament for the Bosa North constituency, also the ranking member on the Defense and Interior Committee of Parliament. And the news that's just coming through, uh, that's also published by the Associated Press, is that the Jangta, that's the co leaders in Niger, have threatened to kill the ousted president of Niger, Mohamed Bazoum, who is in their custody. And that's why the point is being made that ECOWAS's focus should be on securing the release of, of this ousted president before any option is taken. But a number of views have been coming through on this. And uh, also, uh, Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo has been speaking about this. He served in the military. He has an understanding of how things play out. He's a founder member of the NPP and many other things that he's done. This is what he had to say. Uh, we got the, 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 the money, the equipment, even the men. It's a question. Now, let me come to Ghana. We, as a country, the strength of our army on the whole is just about two brigades. And you don't fight the war with two brigades. But nobody knows how it's going to end. This is a pure infantry work. You are fighting an infantry battle. This has nothing to do with Navy or Air Force. The Air Force, we, are, we don't even have the aircraft. What sort of contribution are we going to give? We have to assess ourselves first. And with the two brigades, any good commander who advises his government, a particular Ghana government, not to get involved in this military. I think you get me. Yeah. Because we don't have the men to fight such a war. A war when you don't know even when it will end. On such a vast land, you have to pass through countries upon countries before you get to Niger. Definitely is going to demoralize the soldiers. Because if the body, body bag started coming, it will alarm the soldiers. And as I said, any good commander who knows his strength will not get involved in such a thing. That's Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamako there. We asked if Ghana should commit soldiers to the Air Corps standby military for a possible intervention in Niger. We ask you, the members of the general public, um, because you also have a say in all of this, and, and there's some views shared on Facebook specifically, and uh, these are some of you sharing your thoughts as well. This one from Combat Ahmed uh, Bijal says, you can't fight Galamsey in, in land guard, yet you're going, thinking of fighting another man who is trying to free see themselves from extortion. Well, it goes on to say we are not serious, and that's why it goes on and on, and the youth are leaving every day. Um, this one here says they can't fight the president of Ghana to change his... Okay, so this one here goes on. It says, yes, Ghana should send troops, so by the time they will come back, uh, it goes on. This one also here says that 
and as a member of the ECOWAS, it is good for Ghana to send troops also uh, there for support as part of the reasons for establishing the organization. And Barnabas Nanang says, Niger has not done any crime, you say, to be invaded by our own people who were supposed to be our keepers. Uh, they only said they don't need French and on their territory, that's all. They should go back to their country and why Africans will help white to fight their fellows. It goes on and on. Barnabas, thank you for your thoughts in there. In fact, this is um, a conversation that is raging on social media already and we'll come to more of it. But coming up next here on Ghana Tonight, the relief items are lifted to the northeast region where floods have caused destruction to farmlands and their property. It's our next conversation tonight we give you the update of what's happening there stay with us we'll be back shortly ladies and gentlemen we're going to demonstrate to you the superior properties of flamingo paint as compared to other paint brands on the market, we take equal quantities of flamingo paint and this ordinary paint. We then dilute them with water. And now, let the test begin. The gentleman on the left is going to apply the ordinary paint and the gentleman on my right will use the flamingo superior paint. As you can clearly see, flamingo has the obvious better hiding. Furthermore, flamingo has painted a much larger area you know one bucket of flamingo paint is equal to several buckets of any other paint brand on the market flamingo paint is made with superior formulation to give superior durability superior hiding superior coverage flamingo paint simply superior <laughs> Chop money, they were chop money is here. <laughs> Collect your chop money every morning at 10 a.m. by simply dialing star 446 hash and select option 2 to play day 1 539 chop money. Win 40 times your stake with direct 2, 400 times your stake with direct 3, and 20 times your stake with direct 1. You can also pay your numbers to win big. You only pick your numbers from 1 to 39, so winning is easy. Dial star 446 hash to play day 1 539 chop money now. They were a fuck. Hey, Ojam, you are looking good, oh my friend. Is there something you are not telling me? Yes, I'm feeling very good and strong. What is the secret? It is not a secret. My farmer used Yara Miller Activa on me two weeks after planting. This boosted my growth. Then after, he used Yara Bella Sulfan as top dressing when I was at knee length. My goodness and strength is because of Yara Miller Activa and Yara Bella Sulfan. Yara fertilizers are nitride based fertilizers that are readily available for plant upkeep and do not over acidify the soil. Yara fertilizers also contain micronutrients such as zinc, boron and manganese which aid in yield and crop quality. If you want to look good like me, then your farmer must go for Yara fertilizers. They are available in accredited agri-input shops nationwide. For more information, call 0308-251-060 or visit our webpage at yara.com.gh or Facebook page. And there is more. Yara retailers can also benefit from selling Yara products by just downloading Yara Connect app 
and scanning QR codes on the Yara sack at the point of sale to end rewards. Use Yara fertilizers for better yield and quality produce. Everybody knows Acrobato. And if you know Acrobato, it means you know M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. M Punch Homeopathy Clinic is my pillar. Let's hear what others are saying about M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. Who will be careful M Punch Wana? Ha! Yes, and I'm young because I'm a problem. Let's say problems room. It's not my own idea, mommy. Papa patches and any other some kitua. I'm quite a point, you know. I'm shaming my dear mom, baby, be an awesome woman, do mommy do me fine, and my own cram, you know, for one I'm quite more ever. And everything yourself, my mommy, no, I do, and the whole wound to me, Nancy. And then you call end point, a mom and you and then the white dear, what's me a sorry, Nancy? That's end point for you. Of a brother, too. Hello, hey, I should show what chair. Okay, a free bra would be end point, what does it? I'm a quiet, you me just to say my name quickly and pass one of my emails in hand and then my genius said bye man. Now we need to be careful here. The hard thing is that you heard everything. I have secret. M point is my secret. M point from your party clinic. I'm free. Banga we go. Me go bono, me go bono, me go bono. E ho na kwai power. This week on Ghana's Most Beautiful, join the contestants as they embrace the celebrations theme. Be ready to be inspired, moved and captivated by their heartfelt performances, paying tributes to Ghana's vibrant cultural celebrations that define its heart and soul. Don't miss this extraordinary celebration live on TV3 this Sunday at 8 p.m. Eviction is looming. Keep your contestant in the competition by dialing star 713 star 13 hash to vote or download the TV3 reality app to vote. GMB 2023, Ghana's beauty. Africa's pride. GMB 2023 is sponsored by Gino Tomato Mix, GTP, Techno Common 20 Series, AT, Pepsodent Charcoal and Lemon Infused Formula and Pepsodent Natural Herbal Formula, Geisha Moringa and Geisha Black Soup, Key Soup, Bell Pack Tissues, Sankofa Natural Spices, Vita Milk, Deluxe Acrylic Paint, Nescofa Blood Tonic, Heaven Black Mosquito Spray and Coil, Enapa Foods, Free Freedom from Casa Precon, Frutelli Calipo, Duffy's Health and Beauty, Obuasi Bites, Nubuna Womuankasa, Dragnet, Top Choku, Global Wings Travel and Tour. Makeup was done by House of Tara. The confession we have isn't so exciting. It is about a young man whose life is almost going down the drain because of betting. The game became part of me. It takes like 90% of my daily activities, if even I'm attending to patients and all that. It's not a respect of person. person. So most of the time we might think it's because someone's poor. No, they are the rich and famous who can't stop gambling. Blame. I've been gambling for a very long time in the past. Mm. I was addicted to alcohol. Mm. I've been addicted to so many things Imagine in the a past. fine boy like you. I, I, I want to be, if only I can be. That's why you want the kind of money that is, is not right for you to have at a particular time. If you put in your mind that it's all about money, 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 and when money is not coming, you tend to dare yourself wanting to go more. You've lost your identity. There are some of our females. <laughs> they are not better, you know. They are better with their bodies. Making us feel as if we have not achieved anything. Confessions shows on Saturdays at 9.30 p.m. on TV3. Brought to you by MTN. Welcome back. This is Ghana Tonight. Now, relief items were airlifted from the National Disaster Management Organization as NADMO headquarters here in Accra to Walewale in the northeast region. That's the chopper you see there uh, where floods have wreaked havoc, now uh, causing destruction to uh, farmlands and property running into thousands of cities. The team was led by the National Director Eric Nana Ajuman Prempe, the Northeast Regional Minister Zakaria Yudani, and Member of Parliament for the Walewale constituency, Haja Lareba Abudu, uh, also received the items. Uh, these are the relief items you're seeing there. Buckets, um, bags of rice, and so on. 
Meanwhile, we understand civil works and reconstruction of the Walewale Gambaga Nalerugu Road, uh, which was affected by the floods, is ongoing. And that's the information that we have um, related to th this rather unfortunate incident. And we, we showed you some of the destruction that the, f the floods have caused. But these are the relief items that were airlifted from Accra the headquarters of NADMO to this place. As we go on, we'll show you some of the, f uh, the havoc that these floods have caused and is still causing in the parts of the Northeast region. Al Hassan John Kweku speaks for the National Disaster Management Organization in the Northeast region. Thank you very much for joining us here on Ghana Tonight. First of all, I want to establish how if NADMO has exact idea of how many people have been displaced by these floods since Monday? Well, uh, at the moment, we are unable to uh, tell the exact numbers that are displaced because uh, we are still doing the assessment and then, uh, you know, uh, the road places, uh, almost every part of the region is affected and uh, some of the roads are not accessible. So we are not able to give that, uh, that figure, but I can tell you that uh, the number is so huge. So we want to take our time to complete the assessment so that uh, we'll be able to give you the accurate uh, figure. So we don't want to rush. I see. And you say almost the entire northeast region has been affected by the floods? Yes. Uh, uh, the Yuyu Napandu, uh, the Yuyu Nason district is affected. The East Mampuzu municipality is affected. The West Mampuzu municipality is affected. The Mampuzu Maduri district is affected. Then the Cheponi district too is affected. And the same as uh, the Bunturugu Napandure district. See, what we are seeing on the route is, is, is even better. When you enter inside, a whole lot of lands are, farm lands are inundated with water. People homes are down and people where uh, the uh, food is being washed away and so many other things. So we just want to take our time to do the assessment so that uh, we can uh, give you the accurate figure of what has actually happened. I see. And, and we are seeing on the screen some people being carried across um, a, a, a road, which has also been inundated by the flood waters. Has this happened before, this magnitude of flooding that, affect, that has affected the entire northeast region? Has it ever happened? I've never seen such a, a flood before. But uh, what has compounded the problem in the West Bampusi municipality was uh, the, as a result of the collapse of the, the dam that uh, had washed away uh, the, the, the bridge, so making it difficult for people to cross to the other side. But uh, as of yesterday, the Minister for uh, Rules and then Highways, the Deputy Minister, Omar Busti in Jalula, and then the Regional Minister and some technical uh, team from the ministry in Accra came down and to assess the situation. As of now, they have been able to provide us with the temporary bridge, so now the road is open. And then uh, also yesterday, uh, uh, the road that is linking uh, the tree and then uh, the Lego to was cut off, but uh, they were able to fix that one too. And then people can now also apply on, on that on the road too. And today too, uh, Madmo also lifted uh, lift items from Accra to the region, and then some are on the way to the region, just in an effort to make sure that those that are displaced are well catered for. Have you been able to, so far, identify what caused this magnitude of the flooding, which you say has never happened before, affecting the entire region? Well, uh, it has to do with the collapse of the dump and the heavy dump. And, you know, nobody has control over the rains. And, uh, you know, some of the, uh, the dumps still needed, uh, needed, needed regular maintenance, and uh, that has not been done. So there are a lot of things, and, you know, sometimes the people to uh, build on waterways and, 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 and others. So it's all a part of the problem. The, the dams in the area have not been maintained for a while, and, and that contributed to this magnitude of the flooding? No, this uh, particular dam that collapsed, I think uh, it needed to be dredged uh -huh. and, and, and uh, some kind of uh, regular maintenance. And I, uh, I think... Uh, that has not been done. But uh, yesterday, uh, they gave us assurance that it was going to be reconstructed and then uh, they'll provide more than uh, spillways. 
so uh, that uh, uh, we avoid any future uh, uh, collapse. Well, but this is this is after the floods have caused the yes. havoc. Yes, and, yes, and, yes. And the, the damage has already been done. Did you, yes. at any point, raise concerns about the lack of maintenance of this dam, which has contributed to this magnitude of flooding we are talking about now? You know, some time ago there was another dam around uh, Guapulga that uh, collapsed and then caused. A similar problem and uh, we have a meeting and then we we, we, we spoke about it and then uh, uh, you know uh, that one it was maintained and then uh, uh, this is just a different dam altogether uh, around the uh, Bani area it's not the same dam that uh, collapsed uh, that was in 2020 yes that's not the same I see so after you raised concerns about this one was anything done obviously not no, I'm referring to the other one that collapsed the other time, uh, the Guabulga Dam. So that one it was reconstructed and then uh, uh, maintained. But you never raised because concerns about this particular dam that that collapsed, that led to this magnitude of flooding? Well, we have a lot of dams uh, in the region, and uh, uh, we need to uh, take a second look at that, because uh, now that uh, this one has also caused this uh, same problem, I think uh, the authorities will have to raise, uh, sit down and uh, see how they can uh, do regular maintenance of those dams so that they uh, can avoid uh, future problems. Do you have like a, a monitoring mechanism there to monitor the, the health of these dams, the status of these dams, so that <laughs> we will not be talking about something that should have been done to prevent this flooding after the disaster has happened? Well, uh, you know, we have uh, disaster management committees in all the district assemblies, and then uh, some of these dams will be, I think they have bought, bought, bought that manager that oversees the affairs. So we are just uh, hoping that maybe after everything is done, uh, we have to call a meeting and then uh, engage all of them, then we'll put our heads together to see what we can do to address the situation. Hmm. I see. Uh, what, what about the rains? Has it stopped? Come again. The rains in the, in the area. Has it subsided as yet? The rain. Subsized as yet, I beg your pardon. Well, we are in the midst of uh, the rains, and uh, my advice to residents and other, other uh, people in the region is that uh, let us be cautious about our own lives, lives and then also listen to weather warnings. And those of us who are staying lowlands should move to higher grounds to uh, uh, protect ourselves from being affected. But uh, the farmlands as well, we understand huge hectares of farmlands have been destroyed by this yes. by, by, by the by the rains give, give us an idea of, of the the quantum of the destruction we're talking about especially to farmlands in the area uh, the, uh, over here most of us majority of us are farmers and uh, when we talk of uh, farmlands being inundated with water you can uh, uh, see the the, the, the devastating uh, impact but uh, you know because we are not able to get to the force to uh, do the assessment we can't give any accurate sugar. So we're just hoping that maybe when the water uh, will cease, then uh, not more and then the Minister of Agri, and then uh, we'll get onto the floor to do an elaborate assessment so as to be able to determine the number of acres that are actually destroyed. Well, is the expectation of many that after this incident, you would also help to be a bit proactive so that nothing of this sort happens again, okay? All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Al Hassan John Kweku uh, speaks for the Northeast National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, there. Now we have an idea of what's caused this magnitude of flooding in the area, which, from the records, has never happened before in the, in the Northeast region. That's quite worrying, to say the least. But coming up next here on Ghana Tonight, the National Service Secretariat says. 500 service personnel will be deployed to farms for this year's national service. But what is the end game and how has this program fared over the years? We have a conversation on this. And earlier today, my colleague Joseph Armstrong Gould visited these national service persons, 500 of them. We understand the national service scheme intends to deploy the 500 personnel to its farms to serve the nation, the national service and the farm. Now, the, the move is in line with this current 
resolve to deploy, retrain, and provide employment opportunities for personnel under the deployment for issues relating to the mission of the scheme. Here is the Minister for Food and Agriculture speaking to the initiative. Take a look. Uh, National Service has shown the way. Uh, the Ghana CARES uh, program has also shown the way, and we are going to follow that module and to make sure that we have a lot of Ghanaians employed in the agri and agribusiness sector and also um, a project such that we are able to feed uh, the population and export uh, for, uh, for our national development. He gave a hint on the second phase of the planting for food and jobs program. The national services is a place that are notwithstanding our PFJ 2.0 being launched. The agenda on uh, PFJ 2.0 is that if we do it right, we can feed ourselves and we can feed the world. We definitely can do it. The Kumeu project with animal husbandry, aquaculture and poultry intended to engage, retrain and provide employment opportunities for over 20,000 young people annually. I see. So, Ose Sibianchi is the executive director of the National Service Secretariat. Uh, he's joining us on Zoom. Thank you very much for joining us here on Ghana tonight. First of all, what's the end game for this deployment of the 500 national service persons to to the farms that you the service you own hello and unfortunately we, we lost him um but anthony morrison uh, is also the executive director of the chamber of agribusiness ghana he is also joining us but even let's we'll rectify the zoom connection but i'm going to show you we have some graphics of the uh, ghana agriculture census that was done by the ghana Sisco service sometime in 2018 2019 and the, the results released in 2020 we we have details of that just extracted some portions of this survey just to give you an idea of what we're talking about with respect to the challenge we're faced with getting young people to get into agriculture. I want to take a look at this. This is from the Ghana Agriculture Survey. That's the census. There's the age and the sex distribution of the population in agriculture in this country. Between 0 and 14 years, 35.6%. 15 to 64 years, 60% of the people in agriculture and 65 years and above 4.4 percent and that's the fundamental concern that has been raised that you have the agricultural population in this country aging that you have a lot more older people in a greek than younger people that's what you see there the 60 percent between 15 and 64. then also another picture is painted when we go to the next and that's what you see there more than half that 53.3 percent of the employed population that's 15 years and older are in the services sector followed by agriculture that's 33 percent with industry having the least 13.7 percent so you see there that a lot more young people are in the services sector as compared to the agriculture sector and we are said to be an agrarian economy Okay, so it's a fundamental concern there. And if you look at the ex what we're doing with importing almost everything into this country, tomatoes over $400 million imported from Burkina Faso, onions over $30 million imported from Niger, it raises fundamental concerns. And this is it. 52% of the labor force is employed by the agricultural sector, according to the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, uh, FAO. Also, we see that also playing out in, in, in there. So this gives you a picture of what we are confronted with, reason why something urgently has to be done. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly after this quick break. We'll rectify that some connection to the executive director of the National Service Secretariat and Anthony Morrison, executive director of the Chamber of Agribusiness Ghana. We'll be back shortly.
we are done with group A, we are done with group B. This week is the 10 of group C. Them fancy man girl. A brand new Mali, Sasha, we. Me from Konamasa, me from Konamasa, me from Konamasa. But you know, say, before teaching was, yeah, and it's fast playing boys here with you. Don't miss the battle. I beg you, the fact that I'm a comedian doesn't mean give me funny taste. I am here for the food, <laughs> not for anything. Don't miss the competition. <laughs> It will be on in the kitchen right here on TV3 on Sunday, 5 p.m. My name is Cookie, and this is Kitchen Wars Season 2. Kitchen Wars! Kitchen Wars Season 2 shows Sundays at 5 p.m. on TV3. Don't miss it. Sponsored by Gino Tomato Mix. And Napa Foods. Say Napa. And here on Soko. PGL. The confession we have isn't so exciting. It is about a young man whose life is almost going down the drain because of betting. The game became part of me. It takes like 90% of my daily activities. If you win, I'm attending to patients and all that. It's not a respect of person. person. So most of the time we might think it's because someone's poor. No. They are the rich and famous who can't stop gambling. Blame. I've been gambling for a very long time in the past. Mm. I was addicted to alcohol. Mm. I've been addicted to so many things. Imagine in the a past. fine boy like you. I, I, I want to be, if only I can be. That's why you want the kind of money that is, is not right for you to have at a particular time. If you put in your mind that it's all about money, 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 and when money is not coming, you tend to dare yourself wanting to go get more. Mm. You've lost your identity. There are some of us. Females, <laughs> they are not better, you know. They are better with their bodies, making us feel as if we have not achieved anything. Confessions shows on Saturdays at 9:30 p.m. on TV3. Brought to you by MTN. Ten valiant men, all poised to battle for the bragging right. Old wise say, improves as time goes on. The stars are aligned for us in this moment. Our time is now. We did not come to first our shoes. We came to our own. Fresh power, phenomenal strength, new and never seen before. Who takes the title? Ghana's Strongest, the power to do. Catch the new season of Ghana's Strongest Sunday at 4 p.m. only on TV3. Ghana's Strongest is powered by Gasem, the nation builder. Brought to you by Mixi Choco, Channel Hot, Deluxe Acrylic Paint, Dragnet. Hey, hey! What do you do with some cool 2000 to win game show is exactly what you need. Welcome back to Ghana Tonight. We apologize really for that earlier hitch in the connection, but Osea Sebeinchi is director, director of the National Service Scheme. He's joining us on Zoom, as well as Anthony Morrison, also the director of the Chamber of Agribusiness Ghana. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Mr. Sebe, I was asking earlier what the end game of sending these National Service persons, 500 of them, to also serve on the national service farms. After that, what next? First of all, the name of our project is called Search Kumau Economic Enclave Projects. And national service, as you are aware, has been in existence to close to 50 years. We are going to be 50 this year. And all these years, national service, we are known for doing a lot of things, including farming and others. We deployed to several areas, especially in the area of health sector. We also deployed to support our break. We deployed to support teaching and learning. And now back to your question as to what do we want to achieve at the end of the deployment? Now, National Service 
currently we are moving from our former mission statement of just mobilizing for deployment to deployment for employment. And in so doing, we are repositioning the scheme in such a way that we are not just going to remain as a conveyor belt, but now we want to add value to our graduates who are going to be with us for a year. And as part of the strategy, we are now deploying a lot to our farm. Last year, we deployed some. And because we have tested and it has worked, that is why now we want to scale it up by deploying a lot of the numbers into our farm. The objective is that we want to give them a real practical experience that is going to prepare them for the world of work. And we are also trying to prepare them and plant them into the farming industry. Because the land that we've acquired is so large that the plan and the objective of the scheme is that after they've been with us for a year and have actually gone through the routine work and to know all what they are supposed to know with regard to the national service work in the area of the area of their study, after we've taken them through all what they are supposed to know within the year, after the year, then all those who prove to be wealthy of the course. We'll, we'll then uh, follow up on it. But you see, there's a fundamental issue here because this is not the first time we've we've done this and send people to for national service on the national service farms. It's been happening for quite a while now. Mr. Morrison, we are faced with a critical challenge here where we have a lot more of the older people in the agri population than younger people. Will the national service intervention, this one, address the fundamental challenge we're talking about? Yes. The issue about the aging population in our agriculture uh, sector is uh, a national security issue, to put it bluntly. Uh, uh, the 2018 agriculture census stated clearly that uh, we have more than 70% uh, of uh, over age population. Now, uh, luckily for us uh, at the chamber, uh, we did a tour uh, two weeks ago of uh, various agricultural lands, and uh, we actually visited one of the farms uh, in Kumewu, which is being used for uh, by the National Service uh, as one of the commercial hubs. Uh, they have uh, put in place accommodation facility. Uh, they have done the irrigation. But let me add that it is not about putting more youth into direct productivity. It is about prioritizing the needs of this sector. Now, we're talking about increase in mechanization. We're talking about guaranteed market. If we are putting youth into productivity, are we otherwise also going to provide the critical infrastructure and the finance that is required for them to be able to continue farming after the national service is done. These and many others are some of the things that one will need to look at. And let me say for a fact that most farmers or most youths are more fascinated about technology in the agriculture space. Uh, we carried out some uh, preliminary uh, surveys that shows that over 99% of youths are not even willing to stay in the rural areas when they cannot access internet, okay, Facebook, WhatsApp, even within an hour. Out of over 100 we interviewed, only about three, that says that they can stay a day without WhatsApp or Facebook. So there is also the need to advance the, um, the infrastructure need of uh, internet of things, access to internet and what have you, so that uh, the youth who are otherwise more um, more involved in IoT could also find it convenient. To be able to get into this. Um, Mr. Morrison, thank you very much for your thoughts as well on this. Is Chief Executive Officer of the Chamber of Agribusiness Ghana. Mr. Asbenki, thank you as well. Uh, he heads the National Service Scheme, and this is something that we're following quite closely. We have 
the next conversation on this matter being what is happening on the ground in, in these farms. But thank you. Our citizen of the week, as we round up this week, and per the choice of you, our viewers, Augustine Ni Odoi Lai, for the heroic act of saving for his 50 class six pupils of the the school that does a carefield school complex from an imminent accident. A uh, call to you, Augustine Ni Odoi Lai. If you go on 3news.com and TV3 Ghana on Facebook, you would see exactly what this young man or this boy did. Congratulations to you. Thank you. On behalf of the rest of the team, thank you so much for staying with us here on Ghana tonight. Join me at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning for Key Point. We have a conversation. I am Alfred Akonsi. Have a good night. Ghana Tonight is brought to you by Flamingo Paint. Superior durability. Superior hiding. Superior coverage. Simply superior.